hey, everybody, it doesn't matter if you live in the city or in the burbs or out in the country like us, maybe even a small town, we are all going to be affected from crap hitting the fan. And from what we see, it is coming. Now, granted, the bigger the population you live near, the bigger problems you're going to have. So what I did is I compiled a list of 12 things to be ready for, to prepare for, especially population centers when crap hits the fan. So make sure you take notes. Lots of really good stuff here. Go through the whole video and let's jump right into it. Number one, no water. Clearly, we know water is essential to life. You have to have it. Lots of it. Of course, stockpile a lot of water ahead of time. But, you know, as soon as crap hits the fan and systems go down, fill up your bathtub as quick as possible, your sinks, any type of jugs you might have, stockpile as much water as you can at that last minute. Try to have as much water as possible. Now, with that, understand that a water filtration device is always better. If you have some kind of like stream or creek nearby, well, then you're golden. So make sure you have some kind of water filter ahead of time too. I just modeled an electric one the other day, but you can have any type of model that will help you purify your water. So that way it's not simply just having what's in your house, but you can replenish it as well. Number two, food shortages. If you didn't know, grocery stores are on a just-in-time system. In other words, they don't want to store a lot of food in the back where it may spoil or expire. Instead, as soon as they get in, they put it right in the shelves and it sells it to you. Especially in this computer age, they're able to do that very quickly and replenish their shelves every day instead of stockpiling food. So if we're talking about just a food grocery store stops getting groceries, three days of normal shopping, it's going to mostly be gone. But what happens when the crack, crap hits the fan? We're talking about the food being gone in a matter of what? minutes or hours, it's going to be gone very quickly. So obviously stockpile a lot of food. Um, I even recommend getting a lot of food, like canned food is always a good thing. But food, not necessarily just canned food, but food that's very quickly easy to prepare. Like you get like a can of chili, for example. Or I talk about getting like American Reserves. It's one of our sponsors where you can get freeze-dried food is always a good thing. But having stuff that takes very little, if not no preparations best, and especially when it comes to cooking. Think about this. Even if you have a fuel source and you're actually cooking your food, there's putting a lot of smells out there, letting people around you, you have some tasty food. Number three, sanitation. And there's two things you need to look at with this, by the way. The first is garbage collection. I've heard, maybe I'm wrong, that garbage collectors are not going to be coming to your house when crap hits the fan. So you need to find a way to dispose of your trash. I'm not talking about just throwing away old cardboard. I'm talking about like that can of chili. You know, any type of chili left over in there is going to start rotting and smelling. And we're talking about disease. And you're not going to use your vital water to wash it out. That's a bad thing. So you need to find a way to get rid of it. And putting it into just a plastic bag and stockpiling it in your corner is not going to work either. Burying it is one of your best options if that's a possibility where you live. But the second thing is sewage. Of course, your sewage leaves your home and goes off into sewage land somewhere and you don't have to worry about it. Well, that sewage land requires power. And if we're talking about crap hitting the fan, it really will hit the fan because that sewage isn't going to be going to those facilities anymore. Not to mention, since it's pulling it away from your house or the building you live in, the city, whatever, that's going to stop. So what you need to do is find a plug. I actually have one linked below where you can put it into your sewage trap, inflate it with water or air, and it stops that sewage from backing up into your house because, oh gosh, I don't want to even think about that. Number four, power outages. Our grid is fragile anyway, and let's not even talk about crap hitting the fan. There's so many things that can cause our power to go out for even years. So, I mean, if you depend on electricity, maybe for a freezer or maybe you just like to have a fan going. I know for our house, we have a wood stove, but having a fan blowing the heat once we're making the, the fire in there is vital. So having some kind of solar generator is always good. I've modeled so many of them like Blue Eddies or my Mango series, which are really huge for the house, really awesome. But I would have something, at least having a light on at night or a fan blowing on you while you're trying to keep cool at night is always a good thing. Number five, social chaos. Because it's not just a loss of power. True, we got along years and years and thousands of years without power, but now you give everybody that power, then yank it away, social chaos. You're going to have some serious problems. And if we talk about a long-term grid down, we're talking about millions, tens of millions, possibly even hundreds of millions of people going crazy and literally killing each other. So I always recommend two things. Number one, you practice in some kind of martial arts. I always say Krav Maga. That is like the most realistic one that's going to get you out of a jam if somebody's attacking you. And secondly, you need to look at possibly finding some kind of weapon, a firearm, for example, and train and drill and practice with that weapon now before that time comes. Number six, communications are down. Especially if the grid's down, there's no power. Yeah, don't depend on your cell phone. It's not going to be useful for anything for you. To receive information, I always talk about getting a crank radio. This is the one I love from American Reserves. I've got a bunch of others. But this one just really has high quality sound, a lot of features that I really love by it. 
excellent. I'll put a link below for it. Um, but you know, this is why I also get a solar generator because even though I love American reserves and these crank things, the crank things take a lot of energy, even though it has solar on it. Yeah, you can put it out. But if you want to listen to it a lot, because you know, there isn't guaranteed radio stations will be down, by the way, even though cell service will be for you. Listening to music, listening to updates will make you really feel like you're attached. If you're in a situation where you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're not getting news, you'd be amazed how, let's say, claustrophobic, that's the best term I can use for it, you'll feel. Secondly, I recommend getting some kind of ham radios. I talk about these guys all the time. These things are amazing. They can actually work as scanners so you can listen to like news and fire and such. But I buy these in sets of twos and have it so my family knows how to use them too so we can communicate each with each other if something does happen. Number seven, no medical. Even if there is ambulance service in your area still or hospitals, medical coverage, they're going to be so overwhelmed with everything happening, you almost can't even depend on that. But that's even if they're running. I don't think they even will be. So having not just a medical kit, having some band-aids and gauze is good, but having advanced medical stuff, which I'm working on, some videos takes a while to put these together, having advanced medical equipment and gear is so essential. Also down below, I'll link one of the pump, uh, little booklets I put out. You can buy the whole booklet for $12, has all kinds of checklists. But if you're looking just for the medical checklist, it's only $2, I'll link it below. But you wanna start accumulating and getting gear now because when the medical stuff types hurts happening, it disappears very quickly. Number eight, no law enforcement either. And here we go again, not just martial arts, but again, I always talk about a firearm. I recommend personally, if you've never shot before, if you don't know what you're doing shooting, getting a 12 gauge shotgun. The ammo is inexpensive. The gun is very easy to use. Even the sound of it chambering is a really good thing. Um, I have a new newsletter coming out, which is very exciting. And link below, just click on the newsletter. It's completely free. I won't you know, send off or you know, uh, sell off your information. Of course, I won't. And then you can unsubscribe if you don't like it. But with that, you get a free booklet. This newsletter coming out this Sunday is going to be the first one. And on there, I talk about what I think is probably the best firearm you should buy for the first time. YouTube doesn't like it too much, but my newsletter, we can talk about it quite extensively. Number nine, a mass exodus. We're going to be seeing massive, massive crowds, not even in the thousands or tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of people flooding out of the cities. So if you think, oh, you know what? I don't live in the city. I'm good. You're not good. I live in the burbs. You're still not good. If you live in small towns, you're probably still not good either because those people, the food in the city is going to be go first and they're coming to a house near you. So you have to be ready for this and be ready for the, I mean, people talk about all the time, oh, I'm well armed. Yeah, not for thousands of people pounding on your door for looking for food. You're not going to make it. So you need to prepare ahead of time, you know, have it so your food is, you know, hidden in certain areas or even make it so it look like your, looks like your house has already been ransacked because these massive crowds, it's going to be like the walking dead, you know, sort of like the words, worst amount of walkers coming through, coming to ravage and take everything you own. Those crowds happen all the time in these situations. Number 10, fires. Even without crap hitting the fan, fires happen. We always do things to protect ourselves, smoke alarm, et cetera. I always recommend have a few, a few fire extinguishers because especially if there's no fire services coming your way, if there's no water through the hydrants to put out the fire, you need to deal with it yourself because you really have two options when this happens. Either you battle that fire or you're going to have to evacuate. Number 11, gas leaks. This is a big, big problem. Because if you see natural gas leaks, you'll see entire houses literally exploding into splinters, nothing left. Um, I'll link below a very inexpensive gas leak detector. In a situation, you know, a lot of times the, the natural gas coming into houses is actually kind of vulnerable. And if you're not able to stop that, the gas leak will tell you if there's gas coming in. And that's a really good time to evacuate because, of course, you don't want it to explode while you're home. And 12, no gasoline. It's really simple. If there's no power... There's no gas. Not to mention, even if there is power, if people are evacuating, the gas is going to sell up very quickly. So what I always do is recommend or estimate how much gas you're probably going to need to get out of the city and then probably even double that because understand you're going to be stuck in not just traffic, but bumper to bumper traffic. And the gas simply is going to sip away, sip away. And having a lot of extra gas, of course, is really good. But even to that point, you may see some cars starting to uh, block the road. But one thing I'm going to recommend, I'll link it below, is a siphon pump. You know, so let's say the power is gone, cars, some cars are getting out, the actual plates to pull up to get gas from a gas station, pretty easy. Of course, we're not talking about necessarily stealing, I would never do that, but if crap hits the fan and everything goes down out of nowhere, the gas is gonna be up for grabs and you're trying to get out with your family. You know, you can always go back and pay the gas station later if you feel like you need to. 
So ultimately, there's lots of things we need to account for with crap hitting the fan. And it seems like it is coming. I don't know about you, but it seems like every day we're getting closer and closer to this. But understand, though, 95% of people, if not more, don't prep. So you need to make sure you prep and have this stuff ready because when that time comes, it's going to be chaotic, catastrophic, and it's going to be completely violent too. So we have to be ready for all this. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.